This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, we talk with two Penn State Hazleton students who are getting ready for the university's big 46-hour dance marathon fundraiser. Why, hello there. Thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us at SSP TV. I'm Ken Cara, and let's get to our local information from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hazleton police are investigating an armed robbery. It happened around 1030 last night at the Great Wall restaurant on Sherman Court. The robber pointed a gun at the owner and demanded money. The owner turned over an undetermined amount of money and the suspect fled. No one was injured. The suspect is described as five feet, five inches tall with a heavy build wearing a dark colored hooded sweatshirt that was zipped up all the way, making a mask. Anyone with information is urged to call Hazleton police at 570-459-4940. All calls will be kept confidential. Hazleton Police Chief Jerry Spezial says that people are calling in tips and also providing them online at hazeltonpolice.com. The chief says that a public service announcement is being created that he hopes will better explain how to provide tips and encourage the public to use a new app as well. It's hard when you tell the public, we have this new phone app. You can now text the police, but they don't really visualize it or see it. So this is going to be a commercial with a bit of a jingle and then you'll see the actual police takedown. So in your mind, you almost understand how the phone app works so that the everyday person can understand it and use it real simply. And just to reiterate, all they do is text their tip to crimes is what it is, correct? You either, you either t use the word my tips, you write the word my tips in the body of the story, and then you text it to the word crimes. So you text it to 274637, which is crimes. Then in the body, you write the word my tips, all one word. And then you write what that tip is. But it's got to be my tips is our signal or our keyword that sends it to our police department. You can download the app called Tip Submit on your smartphone. You can submit tips via the app and also upload photos as well. For more information on the new technology, go to hazeltonpolice.com. The City of Hazleton finally has a 2016 budget, the same budget that Council approved back on December 29th before Mayor Jeff Cassatt took office. While the spending plan calls for no tax increase or fee hikes, it also provides no funding for additional police officers. Cassatt did want to use the money from the earned income tax to hire more police. However, state law prevents the money to be used for police hirings. Meanwhile, the community has stepped forward to help the Hazleton Police Department. An event called We Are Hazleton, supporting the Hazleton Police Department, will take place tomorrow at 5 p.m. at the Pines Eatery and Spirits in downtown Hazleton. It's a kickoff for a newly created 501c3 foundation to support the Hazleton Police Department. It will feature beverages and appetizers, plus Ostrich Hat will perform. The suggested donation is $20, and there will also be an auction and tricky trays. The goal is to raise $50,000 to help the Hazleton Police Police Department purchase much needed equipment. The public is invited. Your help is also needed to help kids fighting cancer. Lisa Sugar has more on this weekend's big event known as THON. In case you didn't know, THON is the largest student-run philanthropy in the entire world. And THON, of course, is the big dance marathon taking place at the Penn State University Park campus. And it's taking place February 19th through the 21st, so just around the corner. I'm here with a past dancer and a future dancer that will be taking part in THON. I'm pleased to be joined by... Andy Object. And Andy, you are the... I'm the THON chairperson here at the Hazleton campus. All righty. And Ryan, you are... I'm Ryan Moran, I'm the THON tech captain, and this year I will be a dancer at THON. All right. Now, Andy, you told me you've danced before, so you know what it's like 46 hours on your feet. Tell me about it. Yes, it's very tough, but everything we do is for these kids, and they have to deal with this pain every day. If we can't deal with this for 46 hours, nothing, like, there's nothing compared to this, the pain that they have to go through on a daily basis. And when you're talking about the pain that the children have to deal with, it's pediatric cancer. You're helping the Four Diamonds Fund, mm -hmm. so that's what THON is all about. What was it like after you participated in it? What was going through your mind? It was an awesome experience. If I had the chance to dance again, I definitely would, and I loved it. Oh, well, I've been there personally. I know what it's like. My, th my son danced as well. 
What have you been doing to prep? Because this is a big event for you. Yep, I've been uh, trying to get in shape, you know, eating healthy, cutting out the caffeine and sugar to get ready for uh, staying up for 46 hours, you know. Um, I'm really excited. I've had a great mentor in Andy and a lot of friends and family around me supporting me. So I know I can count on all of them. And you come from a Penn State family, you said. Yes, I do. My father actually went to the Worthington Scranton campus, and all of his brothers actually went to Penn State. And I have various extended family that's also been at Penn State. So it's really a family tradition for us to be here. So you have a lot of relatives and friends and a lot of people in our entire community. What do they have to do to help make this the biggest fundraising year for Thon at Hazleton and for Thon overall? Just continue to donate uh, and support us while we're there. Uh, you can go online and support on our website. Okay, so Andy, if they want to donate, they go to thon.org, and up at the top you'll see Donate Now, and click that and just type in Hazleton, and you'll donate to our campus. And Thon raised how much last year? $13.02 million. So, and Hazleton raised $29,253.41. Wow, so are you hoping to break that goal? Yes, I would like to, so. <laughs> All right, it's a competition for these campuses and the organizations involved. So please, if you do donate, you can help out the local campus here by specifying that your donation go in their name. You'll be showing them the support they need to help kids fight pediatric cancer. Good luck. Thank you. And I hope you guys come out on top. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Red Lion Little League, the team from Pennsylvania that won the U.S. Championship, raised over $20,000 for a thon. Good job, guys. Coming up on FYI, Dave Seaman from The Standard Speaker and I will take a look at the district playoff matchups for our local high school basketball teams. And fresh off the trade show circuit, Wild Bout Hunt and host Dennis Gantz shows us some of his favorite products to help him in the hunt. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Well, it's hard to believe, but the time is almost here for Wild Bout Hunting to be officially on the Hunt Channel and right here on SSP-TV. We're pleased to welcome back the producer and host of that show, Dennis Gantz, our good friend. And Dennis, you're always here to give us some great tips uh, before the show even kicks off yet to tell people, you know, some hunting advice, uh, maybe some products that are available. And I know you've been making the rounds, going to all the different trade shows that have been out there. So you have some cool products you want to tell people about. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, hunting season kind of never really comes to an end for guys who, and gals who, who love to be in the outdoors. And there's a lot to go on right now. Uh, even though the weather's not the best, uh, we've had the monsoon come through today. But um, the, we just finished up at the Early Bird Expo out of Bloomsburg uh, Fairgrounds. And uh, just last this past weekend, the Great American Outdoor Show ended. And we had the uh, opportunity to get down to Kentucky at the ATA at the beginning of January. One of the companies that we uh, met at the ATA and also followed up with at the Great American Outdoor Show was called All In Outdoors. And they have a product called the Leg Cuff. And... Um, we thought it was really unique. It's a great little tool. Um, you're always looking to stock up on gear for the upcoming hunting seasons. And this is twofold. It's not only something that you can use for deer season, but also with turkey season coming up in the spring here. Um, and it's a really cool product. This is what, it's, this is what it looks like. It comes in a package like this. This is the smaller size leg cuff uh, that they have at All In Outdoors. And uh, it comes actually in a larger size. But the way it works is this goes around the front legs of a deer if you're dragging. It's a drag system and it comes all assembled right here in the package. I'm just going to set that off to the side for a second. And it's got a nice long handle, okay, pretty ergonomically correct, real strong durable string that's not going to bust and what happens is you just, it's like handcuffs, <laughs> okay, and you're going to put this, uh, your deer's legs will go right in here and what guys will do is when they're dragging their deer out, they'll pull those legs up between the ears and, or between the antlers. And this allows that deer, you know, lift that deer's head up off the ground. It gives you a good ergonomic leverage. And this, you know, can go around a lot of stuff. The other thing they did, this was new this year in speaking with the owners, is they added these rubber inserts, okay? And they look like just little horseshoes. But by putting them in there, we now have a tool for this spring when you bag that big turkey, you can put this around the turkey's legs, pull that tight, all right? And then the nice thing I like about this is we're always about safety when we're out in the outdoors. And although in Pennsylvania we 
passed a law that we don't have to wear any hunter orange when we're turkey hunting anymore uh, in the spring. Uh, I always like to wear orange, especially when I'm moving about the woods. There's guys out there calling and whatnot, and uh, especially if you harvest a bird, you want to make sure that you don't look like a turkey when you're walking out. So, and if you're carrying one, this is orange. So this is going to go around a turkey's legs, all right? You're going to throw that over your shoulder just like that. Boom, turkey will be hanging in there, and you can hold this down here. Nice little easy carry, um, real easy product, and it comes in a nice, with you get the whole kit, Nice Velcro pouch here. You can put this right down in there. The other thing it comes with is those of you who have ATVs or any kind of UTVs, you take this, you put this around uh, the gear rack on the back of your ATV, and then you slide it right over the handles, just like so. And now you don't even have to drag it. You let your ATV do all the work. Hook it up to there, you can drag that deer out with your ATV. Uh, in the fall. So a great little tool uh, by All In Outdoors. We saw it at ATA and the Great American Outdoor Show. It's called the Lake Cuff. Comes in two sizes. Relatively inexpensive. This whole kit costs $30 and uh, it's well worth the investment. Uh, I recommend that you use it. Uh, we're going to use it at Wild Bow Hunting and see how it does for us. Hopefully you'll see us carrying some animals out or dragging some animals out with this in the season to come. Dennis, thanks for bringing this unique device uh, here to us at SSPTV. Mm -hmm. And he'll be back in the weeks to come with more exciting things and some great events coming up. And remember, Wild Bout Hunting coming here to SSPTV in April. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. The rain has moved on and tomorrow looks dry as well, but Friday we could see more winter weather. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight expect partly cloudy skies with a low of 14 degrees. Now on to Thursday where we'll see sunny skies with a high of 26. Thursday night mostly clear, low of 14 once again. On Friday mostly cloudy, we'll get up in the mid-30s. And then on Friday night, 30% chance of snow showers and freezing rain between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. And then we have a chance of sleet after 2 a.m. Our low will be 31 degrees. On Saturday, 30% chance of sleep before 8 a.m., then a chance of rain and snow showers between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., and we'll have partly sunny skies with a high of 47. On Saturday night, a chance of showers before 8 p.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 31. Sunday is partly sunny with a high in the low of 40s, and then Sunday night, 30% chance of snow showers after 8 p.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 30 degrees. If you love Monster Jam, get ready to dial. I have a family four pack of tickets to see Monster Jam this Friday, Friday, Friday night at 7.30 p.m. at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Wilkesbury. All you have to do is call us 459-9813 extension 104. Leave your name and phone number and your name will be entered into a random drawing. So call us now and good luck. And good luck again because here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. Pick two, one, four, pick three, five, nine, four, pick four, eight, seven, nine, four, pick five, six, two, six, one, one. And time now for the home of the week. Nestled among the evergreens, this traditional home in Eagle Rock Resort has three bedrooms, two full baths, and two extra or two half baths, plus an extra large living room for entertaining, along with a formal dining room and a spacious kitchen. The finished lower level features a 42 by 25 family game room and a powder room. This home is close to the school bus stop and the local amenities. It was recently reduced to $249,900 and is completely furnished. If you're interested, call Diane at 570-956-3323. When we come back, it's Dave Day in Sports. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Hi. Don't look at me like I have three heads. I know it's Dave Day. We'll get there. First some news and then some exposition. I want to tell you where one local football player will be playing in college. Derek Dombrowski is going to be a bear, which may sound crazy to Shenandoah Valley fans since their rivals are the Monoy area Golden Bears. But stay calm. Dombrowski will be playing in college at Kutztown University, where he plans to major in special education. He was a lineman for the Devils and will be playing defensive end in college. Now the info you need to fully enjoy your Dave Day experience. Dave Seaman and I taped the segment yesterday, so we'll be talking about some potential matchups in the high school basketball district playoffs. A few games happened last night, and you will see the updated matchups up on your screen on our fancy graphics. 
Only one of our local teams played last night, and that was the MMI boys. They beat Susquehanna to move on to the District 2 single-A semifinals against the number one seed, Four City. The MMI girls, they will tip off the playoffs tonight against Old Forge. Now here's Dave Day. Dave, let's start with the District 2 slash 4 quad A sub-regional boys bracket. And some interesting things happened you were telling me about since there's no use of a power rating system in District 2 because Williamsport from District 4 is a part of it. So this is what happens. Hazelton area, they get a bye as the number one seed. But in the semifinals, they'll play either Scranton or Abington Heights. Two teams who you told me might be the best in the bracket or some of the best in the bracket. Uh, definitely. Abington Heights has the best record. If you go by record, they're 20-2 and two with losses only at Scranton Prep and Scranton during a regular season. They've been state ranked all year year they returned some key players from their team last year that won the district championship uh, from what I understand the people at Abingdon Heights aren't happy being a number four seed but because of the way the system works out that the current criteria they are entitled to that number four seed. Did you talk with coach Joseph as he gets his team ready what are the Cougars looking forward to they know they have a challenge ahead of them? Uh, yeah they had a, a, a very good practice uh, earlier in the week I know that and they've been practicing this week a couple of scrimmages were lined up to, to keep them fine-tuned going into the playoffs and uh, uh, he'll, they'll, they'll be ready whoever they play uh, yeah, at this time of the year you have to play every team if you want to win a championship so uh, I'm sure it, it doesn't matter who they play it's just that's a little bit of a spicier uh, semi-final matchup if it's a uh, Hazelton area having heights on Friday night. All right, Dave, let's talk about the Hazelton area girls. Also with a bye, and they will face either Scranton or Wyoming Valley West. They played very well against Wyoming Valley West this season. And Dave, with the Hazelton area girls, it seemed like Coach Gabio was waiting to see until the end of the season kind of what he was going to get from some of the younger girls. It ends up when everything came together, they won another conference championship. But again, with them, we'll see if they can get the district title. Now. Yeah, they have, uh, you know, the spark plug, the senior spark plug, Mackenzie Uri. He's been there. She's been through playoff games. Uh, I, I think she wants to win a district championship. They haven't won a district championship since 2010. Uh, some young girls have really stepped up. Uh, Kendra File and uh, Maddie Morocco has really stepped up this year, and they've they've had uh, an outstanding success this year. Uh, Ashley Martinchek, uh, the girls, they they just buy into the system that Coach Gab plays, uh, up tempo and uh, be ready to press, and uh, the opponents better be ready to be pressed. Dave, down south in District 11, the AA girls playoffs. Marion will take on Salisbury, and it's interesting because Marion earlier in the season, Dave, I'm going to go back to the Schuylkill League Championship, when they played Minersville earlier in there, actually, they Minersville beat them pretty bad, and then they come back in the Schuylkill League Championship game, they give Minersville a pretty good game, hung there with them, lost by under 10 points, so Marion may be moving in the right direction. They might see Minersville yet again in the district playoffs. One word, defense. I mean, the Phillies are going to play defense, so that's going to keep them in a lot of games. Uh, if they get some offense to balance uh, that uh, outstanding defense, they're traditionally they're known for that. Uh, I think the Phillies are going to make a run. Uh, Minersville, a team with uh, no seniors, believe it or not, in their, in their regular rotation, but they're undefeated this year. One of the state's top-ranked teams in Double A. Uh, they've been there all year, but uh, the Phillies know how to play them, and uh, maybe, like the saying goes, the third time's a charm. See what happens there. Also in that bracket, North Schuylkill taking on Notre Dame Green Pond. Avery Jordan, Tiffany Lepotsky, just been so good for North Schuylkill this year. We'll see if they can carry them in the district playoffs. Single A girls playoffs. Merritt Mono area gets a bye, and they're going to play the winner, Dave, of Weatherly and Shenandoah at Marts Hall. The Weatherly girls get back in the playoffs after years. They get to play at Marts Hall, but they can't really, you know, sit there and just enjoy the whole thing because you have to play a very good Shenandoah Valley team. Yeah, they've played Shenandoah Valley tough twice this year. Uh, they'll come up on a short end. Uh, second game, they had a chance to win in Shenandoah, but uh, maybe. Maybe some of the inexperience at the time that they weren't able to pull it off. Uh, again, a situation where maybe the third time would be the charm. Uh, whatever happens, it's a, it's a, another stepping stone for Coach Kevin Kringy and his program at Weatherly, and uh, that's a team you're going to be hearing from over the next few years because he has them headed in the right direction. All right, Dave, District 11, single-A boys, Shenandoah Valley. They will play Medical Academy Charter. I like this Shenandoah Valley team. They have the talent. They competed all year long in a tough Schuylkill League, eventually winning the Division Three championship with tough teams like Marion and also Mono Area breathing right down their necks. Yeah, uh, the, the Blue Devils have definitely made another step forward. Uh, Coach Rob Miller, Shenandoah, has uh, played a lot of these kids that are juniors now. They're, they're now uh, they were freshmen when they first broke into the, the ranks there as freshmen, and uh, he really built them up slowly, and they've gotten a little bit better, a little bit better each year uh, into a division champion this year, and uh, right now they're looking at a district championship. It's been a while since uh, Shenandoah Valley's won a district championship. Uh, in single A, their first t first opponent though is not going to be easy. Medical Academy Charters beat Mono Area twice this season. Uh, it's an up tempo type game, but then again, Shenandoah Valley likes to play that way. Dave, speaking of Monoy area, double A boys for District 11. They will open up against Williams Valley, and then Marion will get Minersville again. That tough Schuylkill League, Dave, not an easy draw for Marion or Monoy. Uh, neither team, but uh, I think both teams know that they're going against teams they played against this season. Uh, Marion drawing Minersville, a team they lost to earlier in the season. 
But uh, you win one game at this level, uh, puts you in the district final, and it gets you into the state tournament as the top two teams go into uh, the state tournament. All right. Well, Dave, we appreciate your time. Check out Dave in the stand. Speaker will cover the Cougars throughout the playoffs and they'll have coverage of all the other teams we mentioned as well. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. Hey golfers, have we got the perfect vacation spot for you. Myrtle Beach. Signature golf packages built in reserves of the finest and most reasonably priced Myrtle Beach vacation. From scheduling your golf tee times to making your hotel accommodations. Oceanfront to golf course villas. Mark Pass and a Hazleton native has been doing this for 10 years. Expect excellent customer service. Local knowledge of all the courses and the best golf vacation of a lifetime. Call now to learn all of the specials that Signature Golf Packages can offer you or your group. 866-462-9885 or book now at SignatureGolfPackages.com. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Nuremberg Community Players will be presenting Grease from March 17th through the 20th. The theater is located at 283 Hazel Street in Nuremberg. Music will be performed by the group Better Than Monday. For tickets, dinner reservations, or more information, just call 570-788-4411. Our next announcement, St. Michael's Church in Shenandoah will be holding an Easter bread sale featuring nut, poppy, apricot, and raisin roll, and also traditional pasta bread. The deadline to order is March 1st, and pickup will be held Saturday, March 19th at noon. For information or to order, just call 570-462-0809. And finally, Holy Rosary Parish will be hosting a luncheon on Saturday, March 12th, from 10.30 a.m. to noon. The meal will be held at Catholic Social Services, 214 West Walnut Street in Hazleton. There is no charge for the meal, and all are welcome to attend. The parish would also like to thank the Hazleton Rotary Club for their support. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Susan Birkuk Pukio Brock of Drums. Funeral is Saturday at 9.30 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Regina T. Latoff, formerly of McAdoo, Arrangements are private and under the direction of the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. And Genevieve Sturlock, formerly of McAdoo. Arrangements will be announced by the Stanley E. Anoloski Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Frank Ancharski of St. John's. Frank, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. I don't trust Punxsutawney Phil. I do trust Major League Baseball for spring when it's going to come. And guess what? Pitchers and catchers reported today for the Philadelphia Phillies and several other teams. I think all other teams report tomorrow. So good news, We're moving in the right direction. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Hey golfers, have we got the perfect vacation spot for you. Myrtle Beach. Signature golf packages built in reserves of the finest and most reasonably priced Myrtle Beach vacation. From scheduling your golf tee times to making your hotel accommodations. Oceanfront to golf course villas. Mark Pass and a Hazleton native has been doing this for 10 years. Expect excellent customer service. Local knowledge of all the courses and the best golf vacation of a lifetime. Call now to learn all of the specials that Signature Golf Packages can offer you or your group. 866-462-9885 or book now at SignatureGolfPackages.com.